What's poppin' tea squad? It's me, Keisha, and I'm here with this week's All Tea, All Shade, Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 9, Episode 1 Recap. The Potomac girls are back, and I gotta say, they're back with a bang. I really enjoyed the season premiere episode. But before we get into the season premiere episode, I want to remind you guys that tonight at 6 p.m. Central Time, I will be going live on YouTube with a live Spill the Tea episode. So if you cannot join, of course, it will be uploaded on my channel. But please try your hardest to join me at 6 p.m. Central Time for a live Spill the Tea. Also, me and my bestie Mo are bringing back our hit show, Ask Keisha and Mo. Yes, it was an advice show that I started years ago on this channel. If you never got a chance to watch any episodes, you can view old episodes of Ask Keisha and Mo under the Ask Keisha and Mo playlist right here on the Color Me Pink channel. But we are starting the show back up. It's an advice show. So if you need advice on your friendships, your loved ones, your relationship, your children, your health, your job, whatever, write to us at askkeishaandmo at gmail.com. Com. If you want to remain anonymous, please indicate that in your email. Once again, email us at askkeishaandmo at gmail.com. We cannot wait for the new season to begin. So please participate and email us your story, all right? So in the Potomac premiere, it begins a month after Karen's second DUI, not I did not know that this was Karen's second DUI. So this whole time when I've been saying, I don't think that Karen's a drunk, she's never exhibited that behavior, which I stand by that. She hasn't really exhibited that uh, behavior on this show, but I did not know that this is her second DUI. When was the first one? Is when I want to know. Was this when she was younger or was this just a few years ago? Like, what's the tea? Because now I'm concerned and starting to look at Karen sideways. Not only is this her second DUI, she got a DWI with this accident. They found out that her car was unregistered and she had an unregistered license and she totaled her car. So I'm like, Karen Huger, what is going on, ma'am? Do you need a breathalyzer? Like, what's 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 going on, Miss Karen? Because now I'm really concerned and wondering, do you got a drinking problem? And you just have been able to hide it real well? I'm going to keep my eye on you, girl. Mm-hmm. So, Giselle goes and picks Karen up, because you know she can't drive nowhere, child. So they can go and have breakfast with each other and for her to check on Karen and see what's going on because Karen has been in the house since everything happened. So they go and they have breakfast at this little local diner by Karen's house. And, you know, Giselle brings up the DUI and asks, you know, how are you feeling? This, that, and the third. And Karen was like, you know, I'm grateful that I'm alive. Nobody got hurt or whatever, but... I really can't talk about anything because it's an ongoing litigation, right? Um, but she does go on to say that she feels like it's her parents passing plus her marital problems that got her to where she's at right now with this DUI. Now, yeah, could be true. I don't know. I'm not this lady. Do I have doubts? Yes, and I love me some Karen, but I'm just going to tell you, I think that she might be using these things as an excuse and for a reason of why this happened when it honestly could be she she like a little bit too much juice. <laughs> but I don't know. She could still be having a really hard time with losing her parents. I don't know. Um, As far as her and Ray, 
I, I, I just, mm, I don't think so, but you just never know. You just never know. You just never know. Okay. So Giselle, uh, and her, after they get done talking about the whole DUI of it all and Karen pretty much not answering any questions and deflecting, if that's what you want to say, um, Giselle brings up Mia and she was like, what's Mia with DJ name talking about her new boo thing. And Karen was like, DJ Apple box. <laughs> Us because he got to stand on the apple box just to reach her, and they both pointed out how when Ink and Mia take pictures with each other, she always is standing behind him to make it look like he's tall <laughs> or taller than her. And I was like, Oh my god, you know what? I never peeped that, but that is so true, okay? But Giselle makes a comment about Mia moving fast and moving from one man to the next one, and having you know this next man around her kids like that's a lot and like you need to be thinking about the welfare of your children and how this will affect them and y'all know most times I can't stand nothing that Giselle says but in this case I do agree with her even though you've had a relationship with Ink since you were a teenager your kids shouldn't have been exposed to that so fast and so soon where they still have to get it wrapped around their head that their mom and dad are no longer together. And now on top of that, mommy got a new man that is constantly over her. And then on top of that, the little boy might find out that the man that he thought was his father the whole time really ain't his father. And it's this man, like, it's just too much going on. So I agree with Giselle with that whole statement. So, um, via Mia, we find out that G has moved into the same building that she lives in. And she was like, you know, it kind of do affect her little sneaky links or whatever the case may be. But, um, they making it work. So it's her G and the kids out together having ice cream or whatever. And they have a little one-on-one -on -one conversation. And, um, G says that he doesn't feel like she gave everything when it came to their marriage. He said that she was a good wife and yes, she did try, but he didn't, he doesn't feel like she went that extra mile to really hold on to their relationship. And that she quickly ran to somebody else. Now Mia denies that. Um, I don't agree with Mia's statement because you've been dealing with another man from the beginning of y'all relationship. I mean, the way y'all got together from the beginning, it was built on some bullshit. Let's just be honest. This man was married when you started fucking around with him. So do I feel bad for G? Absolutely not. You reap what you sow. You got a little young bitch. You was cheating on your wife with her. You left the wife to be with said young bitch that you knew had a nigga at home. And then you shocked when she's still cheating with said nigga at home and God knows who else. And whoever else you out here fucking with. And whoever else y'all was out here fucking on people together with. Like, y'all whole relationship was nasty. Okay? So you can't be shocked at any of this. So while G is sitting up here trying to play the martyr, it's like, oh man, please stop. I don't feel bad for you at all, at all. So, um, G says that he doesn't want Jeremiah getting his hair cut by just no anybody, specifically Ink. He does not want Ink taking Jeremiah to go his hair cut because that's like a fatherly thing. And Mia lets it be known that Ink wants a DNA test. And G was like, no, he's my son. And that's that on it. And Mia was like, well, sir, you the one that brought this out to the world. Like, you put it out there. And uh, Ink is trying, you know, to do you a solid, give you enough time. But he can just take you to court. And he was like, well, take me to court. You know, but do what you want to do. He was like, but that's my son. We don't need no further proof unless you think that it's not. And she was like, well, it's a possibility. And I'm just like, the ghetto, the ghetto. What is happening, Mia? And G was like, well, Ink need to fall back. <sighs> and I, I agree with Mia in this instance because you the one brought it to the world that this little boy might not be yours. Now it's out there. Jeremiah is at of age where he go to school. Some kid could bring this up to him if they haven't already. Where he could see something online. Where he could hear something on television. Y'all need to go ahead and get this handled. 
so the truth can be known and y'all can figure it out and move forward. The best thing that could happen out of this is, say for instance, the boy is inks. He would have two loving fathers in his life because G would still deserve to be a father in his life and Ink deserves to be a father in his life. So this little boy will be blessed with not one father, but two. You know what I'm saying? That would be the best thing to come out of this. But there is going to be a lot of hurt and anger and pain and a lot of explaining to do if it is Ink's son. But yeah, y'all need to get a DNA test at immediately, okay? So Ashley is ready finally for a divorce. She out here dating or uh, whatever. Okay, congratulations. Nobody cares. Wendy resigns from her job as a professor because she wants to move on to do other things. It literally was announced today that season two of her talk show will be coming out very soon. So she's still working on that, grinding towards that. But the gag is she has not told her mother that she's resigning from her job because, you know, her mama is all about the, the prestige of it all. And you went to school and now you're going to quit the da, 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 da. So she still got to tell her mama. So Karen meets with newbie Stacy, who used to work for QVC. Um, she just moved back to D.C., and she's beautiful, tall, statuesque, look like she could have been a pageant girl, a, a model, or whatever the case may be. We're also introduced to one of um, Karen's good girlfriends. I forgot the lady name, but she owns a boutique. So they were at the lady's boutique, and they were picking out outfits and stuff. And what was funny to me was the dress that Stacy tried on in the store is actually the dress that she wears in her confessional. So I was like, I wonder, did she buy it or did she borrow it? Mm -hmm. So Karen notices that Stacy isn't wearing her wedding ring. And so they asked her about it. And she was like, well, you guys, I've been separated for, I think she said almost a year or maybe six months or something like that. And she tells them that she and her husband of 16 years are going through a divorce. She was married to a wealthy white businessman. They have a daughter together. And yeah. She's going through a divorce and Karen and the other lady was shocked to hear this. Um, Stacy and the owner of the boutique have a glass of champagne and Stacy was like, you know, is this okay for us to do this in front of you? Like it doesn't bother you or anything. And Karen act like she called her a bitch. <laughs> Karen was like, uh, yeah, like it's fine. Like what the fuck you asking me that for? Like you can tell Karen does not like, having this leg, this label or uh, stigma on her of being an alcoholic. Like she don't like this shit at all, bro, at all. So it's the day of Karen's birthday party that Jizzy Jail is throwing for Karen and it's a hat party now y'all remember how her previous parties that she threw for Karen went a disaster Giselle coming into this season so far has been a lot more pleasant than I think we've ever seen and it's because she does not have Roberto by her side do I think it's genuine hell to the gnaw I think the person that we've seen for the last eight seasons is the real Giselle. Um, but I think she got humbled after last year's season and the reunion where she was in second chair, the feedback that she was getting. And I think that the network and the producers had a conversation with her that you got to pull it together because you are one of the anchors of this show and we don't want to let you go, but we will. So I think that she came in this season knowing that she needed to switch things up. Is it more enjoyable to watch? Yes, I actually enjoy Giselle. Does that mean I'm going to like Giselle anytime soon? Absolutely the fuck not. Because I know this is just a ruse, okay? Ain't nothing about this genuine for me. But Giselle says that she's all about peace. And that she even called and invited Wendy, but I guess she didn't get a response back, okay? And it's like, are you shocked? Girl, stop. So 
And then, but no, let me let me continue on with this real quick. She talked to Ashley about it at the party. Like, I reached out to her. And like, she didn't even respond. Like, I'm trying. Like, I'm... Bitch, you have been on this lady head for the last three years. Could not stand her. Didn't even want to look at her. Didn't even want to breathe the same air as her. But now since Roberto was gone, your lesbian lover is out the picture. Your stud. <laughs> now you want to be uh, nice to Wendy. And she's just supposed to be like, hey, girl. Oh, thank you for the imp. Bitch, no. Life don't work that way. That's why I'm like, this ain't genuine. Stop. So Jacqueline arrives. And I was happy to see Jacqueline for like five seconds and then she immediately started to get on my nerves and I was like yeah Jacqueline mm -mm, I don't see it for you neither now nope don't like it we're introduced to another newbie by the name of Jassy um pretty pretty woman she's uh in a relationship with an NFL player he plays for the Kansas City um billionaires I don't know what they names it the Chiefs child the Chiefs with Travis Kelsey they just won another Super Bowl so you know you could tell Giselle was looking like mm, the NFL player mm. like I can already tell that Giselle was giving her the oh she chocolate with a Super Bowl NFL player man mm. okay Monique 2.0 like you can tell by the look on Giselle's face that the colorism was itching to come out but she's trying to show the world she's different <laughs> but you can tell the colorism in the inside of her just wanted to be like you dark <laughs> you ain't better than me Woo, Jesus. So I can't wait to see how her and Jassy are going to get along with each other because she was already being shady towards her name. Tell some Jizzy, Jezebel, J Jumbalide. I don't know her name, but yeah, she coming too. So we gonna see what, what's the Gigiana between these two. Mia arrives with Jassy, mind you. And was it just me, but did y'all peep how Mia, but did y'all peep how Jacqueline was looking when Mia came in with Jassy. It was given like she came with this bitch. Like, oh, this is what we doing? Like, you can tell like there's still like some weird, envious mess that goes on between Jacqueline and Mia. It was given very territorial. It was giving like here she go playing games again. Like their relationship is. So so weird. And I know it's just not me. But anywho, so Mia brings up how Jacqueline told her that Karen called her drunk. And they was like, for real? This was recently? And she was like, yeah. She was like, she sounded tipsy. Okay? And everybody was kind of like, oh my God. And Wendy was like, not participating. Nope, not gonna do it. Nope, 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 nope. So... I'm like, okay, Mia, you starting shit. Now, don't get mad when Karen finish it because why? Why did you have to put that out there? So it's like, I hope people don't forget that Mia took the first shot with the bringing up Karen allegedly called Jacqueline drunk. Now, am I going to believe anything that come out of Mia and Jacqueline's mouth when we all know Mia be lying? I don't know, Bernie. I don't know. And then why would Karen call Jacqueline drunk? Are they even cool like that enough? Like, mm, I don't really know. And that's what Karen said on Watch What Happens Live last night. She was like, why would I call Jacqueline of all people? I would call Jizzy. And that was her exact words. Karen arrives, really happy to see everybody. And they sit down, they start eating and stuff. And Giselle tells Karen that the ladies have questions about this DUI situation. And Karen was like, okay, the, the floor is open. Axe away, you know. And so nobody really has a question per se. So Karen was like, you know, I want to know who is my real friends. Because this is the opportunity for you guys to swing whichever way you want. I want to see who the real soldiers for Karen Huger are. Because I certainly don't want any fake bitches around me. And I was like, come on, Miss Karen. 
Huger, if you're nasty, giving us Renaissance Tina Knowles realness without the surgery. <laughs> and I was like, yes, Karen. Yes, girl, you better switch it and flip it and rub it down. Oh, no, on these hoes. Yes. So I don't know really know what was everybody's response because they really didn't show it. But I don't know who asked Mia about her situation with Ink, but that comes up and they get to talking about it. And Giselle asks Mia, well, have you shared him with Jacqueline yet? Messy bitch, you messy bitch, you. Her and Jacqueline looking at each other across the table. And she was like, no, no, he don't play about me. Like, no, we ain't doing that, okay? Jacqueline and Mia are such scissor sisters. <laughs> like, them bitches is more than just friends. They be fucking on each other because they friendship is so weird, bro. They be over there clit banging. <laughs> you can't tell me no different. It's weird, bro. So Mia says that she and Ink did G's laundry. Like, that's how good of a man he is that he folded G's laundry after she washed it and they took it to his apartment and put it up for him. What? Everybody was like, what? Like, that ain't noble. Like, that's weird. I can see if G wasn't an able-bodied man. I can see if he was like, on, in the bed, on bed rest, can't get up, can't do nothing for himself. Okay, maybe then, but, huh? Yo, childhood high school sweetheart is folding your husband's undies. Bitch, raise me up to be like Mia, because the fuck... <laughs> Shit, it's hard enough to get a nigga to take you to Fridays for two for 20, let alone get a nigga to fold up your, your husband's fucking laundry. The fuck is going on? Like, okay, girl, everybody was flabbergasted, including myself. So Jacqueline was like, you know, I think ink is really good for Mia. I feel like her and G were more of a business partnership. And Giselle said, did G know that? <laughs> like, what? And Jack was like, well, I think they both knew that. I, you know what? It's a fucked up thing to say, and it might be hard for a lot of people to wrap their heads around it, but that's the truth. Mia was nothing more than a trophy piece for that man. A little young hoe that he could have on his arm that was a freak. That was willing to have threesomes. He knew how superficial um, Mia was and is. He knew that the first chance she got that she was going to hop on the next man's dick. He knew what the fuck he married. You know what I'm saying? It, that marriage was not a marriage based on undying love. No. No. No, 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 no. So for that, I honestly get what Jacqueline was saying. But... Karen was like, Mia, come on. It gotta be more than that. You gave birth. I feel a certain way about G. When G shared with the world that his children had seen you in bed with another man, the fact that your children were plastered all over the news really bothered me, right? Now, let's break that down. When Karen said, you gave birth, what the fuck do that mean? <laughs> like, bitches been having babies just to secure a bag or a status for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. You think a motherfucker give a fuck about having a baby? To secure wealth or status or a title? Motherfuckers been doing it for years. Kings and queens. You marry a bitch and she got to give you an heir. Marrying a bitch from an arranged marriage. I don't know you. You don't know me. And we supposed to be together and build this life. And you supposed to give me an heir. I don't love you. You don't love me. I'm out here fucking one of my handmaids or some shit. Like this shit been going on for years. So let's not act like bitches don't do that. <laughs> You know, and that men don't impregnate women, impregnate women that they don't love. 
You know what I'm saying? So I, I didn't agree with that. Now, when Karen said uh, about the fact that the kids saw her in bed with another man and that uh, her children were plastered all over the news, well, that argument that she and G had in their kitchen or whatever, G was the one that brought it up to spite her and to embarrass her and to shame her, right? Was it fucked up? Yeah, but that's their reality and they're on a reality show. Did she want that to come out? No. So you can't really blame Mia for that. The fact that her children are topics on the internet is a part of the cost of being on reality television. The whole situation with Ink possibly not being her son's father. I can't remember who brought that up. Was it G or her? I think it was G, if I'm not mistaken. But I don't I didn't think that that was fair to pin all of that on Mia. I really didn't think that it was fair. Now is Mia on some whole shit? Yes, 1000%. Is her whole shit now affecting her children? 1000%. But this was going to affect her kids whether she was on reality television or not. So she's to blame, G's to blame, Inks to blame. It's just not her. So Mia, of course, is very taken aback by this and appalled. And she was like, you don't think it bothered me, Karen? I didn't plaster my children all over the gram. Their father did. And for you to sit here and pretend that it's my fault, Giselle then jumps in and was like, but Mia, you didn't protect your kids at all costs. You didn't. Now, I hate to say it, but I kind of like this duo of Karen and Jizzy. Can't stand Jizzy, but they make a good duo. God damn it to hell. Shit, I hate it. So Mia starts to fake cry. And Giselle is the last one to talk about anything about protecting her kids when you so-called Joseph going back to Jamal, whether it was real or fake for a storyline or for real, for real, knowing this man got 10,000 baby mamas and 40,000 kids, you ain't give a fuck how it affected your kids. You don't give a fuck how it affects your kids with your colorism and your ignorant antics throughout the last eight seasons of this show. So you haven't protected your daughters in a lot of ways neither. So that's the pot calling the kettle black. But Mia proceeds to fake cry. Now Nan Tear came up out of them tear ducks, child. Not, not a one. Not a one. And she fake cried for the full reason of playing a victim and trying to get them up off of her. So what's the easiest way to get them up off of her from telling somewhat of a truth? It's the fake cry. So Mia was like, I filed for separation. You guys didn't know what we were going through. Does that mean that I have to stay in a relationship that's abusive? Not this man abusive. Now, when he locked up in that room and wouldn't give her a phone back. <laughs> it's not funny. It's not funny. Could that be considered a, a schmuse? Yes. But for me, that was more of an old man putting your young ass on time out. <laughs> <laughs> so she says, you know, my kids are protected. And for you to sit there and say that they're not as fucked up, both of you. And she's like, I'm done. <laughs> she go in the bathroom, fake crying. And Jacqueline and... um. Who is it? I think it might have been Stacy or Jassy went to check on her. And Wendy stood up for Mia, surprisingly, and was like, y'all don't think that's heavy as like mothers to basically be like judging her and shunning her and this, that, and the third. And the episode went off. Gotta say, I really enjoyed the season premiere episode. I'm going to give it an A. It was funny. It was drama filled. It was a lot of tea being spilled. Baby, the look on Stacy's face. She was looking like, what in the ghetto is going on here? But yeah, it was a really good episode. It tickled my fancy. Y'all, I cannot wait to see 
what you guys have to say about the season premiere episode. Let's talk about it down below in the comments section. And once again, join me tonight at 6 p.m. Central Time for my live Spill the Tea. And if you need or want any advice, email me and my bestie Mo at askkeishaandmo at gmail.com. The email address is also located down below in the description box. Please make sure to thumbs up this video, subscribe to my channel, and turn on your post notifications so you know my videos drop. I love you guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.